Hello, everybody. If you are out there, you want to come in, let's get into Ezra chapter 9. And it is another book, another chapter that God has enlightened and given us understanding so we can walk it out clearly. Ezra chapter 9, and I'm reading from either CSB or KJV, King James Version or Christian Standard Bible. Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you that you have allowed us to sit in your class and read the word according to the way it was written, chapter by chapter, so we can get an understanding. Thank you for making it easy. Thank you for making it clear. And thank you that it is instructions that I can do because I get it. And I'm excited. I would not hang out with anybody the way I hang out with you, unless it was good. And it is, that's the best word I need to know. The word, that's the only word that I, not need to know, but that's the word that I think about. It's just, that's just about the easiest way to explain it without taking up all day long trying to figure the adjectives that describe you. Good is what I have to say. And every day, since you showed me the excitement in how your word flows. I, you have allowed me to live and I have, uh, you have allowed me to show up. And I'm excited to sit and hear you speak again today. And thank you for what you did to the sins in my life. You forgave me and you told me since you did that to me that I need to do that to other folk. And I thank you for the opportunity to not to be offended. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And that's where I am in Ezra chapter nine. Ezra chapter nine. All right, yesterday in chapter eight, since it is a continuous flow and every chapter leans on the chapter before it, in this chapter, in chapter eight, Ezra had just gotten everybody situated and they got to Jerusalem and did what the king of uh, uh, Babylon had given them to do and said, go, you know, you have, you got everything that you need. And I am commanding that everybody that is in the ram or in your vicinity, that they do for you anything that you desire to do this work. And um, not only did the king make it happen, the king also made provision himself. He gave Ezra so much money that they needed. Ezra almost had to call the king on the phone and say, you need to send me an army over here with all this stuff we have. But then he said, no, I'll be ashamed to do this since I told him this God that I serve is able to uh, supply my needs and take care of us, so I won't call him. And the Lord did just that. And there were enemies ready to attack. And and God delivered them out of them all. So sometimes we can ask God to deliver us and he doesn't just because he, we didn't see the enemy that was set up. We tend to believe that we didn't have any. Yeah, you do. God has enemies. And just because you don't see everything that people do to come against you, it does not mean that they were not trying. God just put them in. There, put them in. He took over. He took them in. He put them in their place. All right, chapter nine. Ezra got did everything. Everything is straight. God delivered. He went to the uh, the people or the officials in that area, gave them a copy of his uh, right to do what he did. And now he is in Jerusalem. And let's see what's going on in Jerusalem today. Now, when these things were done, all the things that he did, the princes came to me, Ezra said, saying, the princes came to me. The leaders came to me and said, and they had trouble on their face. And they said, the people of Israel and the priest, the people of Israel and the priest set aside to get a word from the Lord people. 
And the Levite, those separated so that they can help the people of God through the priests and be like the helper of the priests, which minister to the people have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the, per the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, and the Moabites, and the Egyptians, and the Amorites. He said, we walked up in here, hey, Shrekel. He said, we walked up in here, and all the people that God just let back to town to rebuild the temple, and did rebuild it, and we just got to town, took us four months to get here and some days. And we find out that the folk that got the big churches and the big titles, they have gone and they left God. How you do that? After 70 years, you were told why you were under the Babylonian uh, system of government. Why Nebuchadnezzar came in and just destroyed our place. And then God said, I'm going to let y'all back up in here. You ain't going to have your own king, though. You had a, you're going to have a regular king because you're acting like regular people. But I'm going to try to get y'all back on track. And Ezra waited 60 years after you did that. Then he showed up with a few thousands. They come in here and you look just like God never did anything as to teach you a lesson. You look like the same folk that occupied the land while you were in Egypt. And then God took all that time to bring you to this promised land. And then he let you stay here for a couple hundred years and then you demolished it. Then he put you in time out for 70 years. Then he let you back in and you done started this cycle of sin again. And when those folk came in there that had a heart of God and said, Ezra, do you see what's going on in here? For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so that, so that the Holy Seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yes, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. I'm talking about well-known people. God said, I'm trying to, them, them folks said, the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, Jesus got to get here. But the well-known people that's supposed to be acting right, the priests and the Levites and the people, and God told you not to intermingle with people that didn't know his word, that worship other gods, and you got yourself right back in that trap again. And them folks said, about this, oh, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. You got to come through a seed of somebody who has not intermingled or intermarried with ungodly people. And these folks said, all this time, God has allowed us, forgiven us. But let's just see what the word says. And Ezra said, when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle, plucked off the hairs of my head, and pulled the hairs out of my beard, and I was astonished. He said, I, 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 I'm speechless. Lost my appetite. Every time I look around the church, I'm going crazy. Then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled. Everybody that had a heart for God came and sat around me. Everyone that trembled at the word of, of God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until evening sacrifices. I sat there and we didn't say nothing, Lord of mercy. I'm so sick of sin. I don't know what to do. I'm so mad until I feel like I'm in sin myself for the way you're, I just, oof. I'm not in sin. That's not what he said. That's what I said about how he felt. Because I could imagine that every time somebody tell you about the word of God, you don't turn yourself back into doing something I told you that, you know, God, you don't feel God enough to stop. I said, it's just like a kid 
Didn't I tell you not to bother that? I put it up so high, I helped the hoping that you wouldn't go, and you still found a way to get it down. I said, put that iPad up, little girl. And you screaming and hollering. And I said, girl, I said, do you want to go to hell? No, Grandmama, I don't want to go to hell. I can imagine it, uh, Ezra. Out of all that, we, we, we walked over here. We, we came. For how many miles? It took us four months to get from Babylon to this place. So excited to see y'all. And all we see is sin. And at the evening, he sat down. And at the evening sacrifice, he said, I got up from my heaviness. And having rent my garment, I'm all just all tore up. And my mantle, I fell on my knees. And I spread my hands unto the Lord, my God. I'm like, God. God, you no, know, every time I think about it, we made laws that breaks God's heart. And we act like the creator does not know what's to do. So we do something that we want to do. But we're going to find out what happened. He said, I took my, I fell on my face. I fell on my knees. And I said, oh Lord, oh my God. I am ashamed and blessed to lift up my face to you. My God, for our iniquities are increased over our head. We're drowning in sin. What's iniquity? What's sin? It's three. Sin. That means as I read the word of God, I discover things about myself that God said, that's not like me. Then I make the adjustments. Trespass. That means I know God said it's wrong and he dealt with me, but I keep sinning. And I knew I was wrong. Iniquity. There's no end to the sin. I just keep perpetuating. Just keep going over and over. It's like you saying, Lord, uh, Lord, forgive me. And then you God forgive me, you get back right, and then you trespass. That means you you fail again. And then the Lord pick you up and said, Okay, get back up. And then you do it so much until you don't even go to God no more. I just live in sin. I I just I I just I'm just I'm a sinner. And I want the wages of sin, which is I want to die. And I want to be separated from you. That's what I do when I'm in iniquity. We don't like to hear it like that because it sounds too. Yeah. But what's yeah. about the consequences if you're saying four plus four and, and eight? Suppose eight so I just showed up because you kept adding four plus four. The consequence is eight. So if we continue in sin, we just. The cycle of what we're going to get is not what God does. It's already, it's, it's just it's like water on a towel. It's just going to get soaked up. It's just automatic response to what is, is a cause and effect. So, Elvis, the Lord, I, I, I'm ashamed. I'm so tired of coming to you. We've been, you've been, what do you say? Let's just go to work. Seven verse. He said, he said, well, six verse. And he said, oh my God, I am ashamed and blushed to lift up my face to you. My God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass has grown up unto the heavens. We done did something wrong until I saw all our reputation is weighing about nothing. In church doing wrong, you ain't no different than the club. You just look worse than you look worse than the club because the club said, this is what we do. The church said, this is, we don't do that. I'm just saying. I mean, some people got standards and some people don't. But you say church, you just you just look for a different type of behavior. But then if you say club, you know it's on. But how come it's on what God's house is? Elder said, I'm too ashamed to talk to God. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm ashamed. I blush. I, I can't handle it. I just, it's going back to him again and he just brought us out for 70 years. You get locked up for four or five years. You ought to think about it, especially if you're already old when you went in there. But that don't change people. Just because you were old when you went to jail, unless your heart changed, you just is you about ready to do what these folks. We about not only you and me too. 
Elder says, since the days of our fathers, have we been in great trespass unto this day? He said, we ain't been doing a sin since the day we left Egypt. We was living in sin in Egypt. Then we got a little sense. Now, at first, we were just in sin. But then God taught us and we became trespassers. In other words, you know my yard said don't enter. But you come anyway. You trespass. You know you can't come in here and I got a big sign that said don't enter unless you live here. And then you come in anyway. You know you trespass. And that's against the law. Since the day of our father, our fathers, have we been in a great trespass until today, this day. And for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the land. In other words, from the top to the bottom, from the king to the peasant, to the regular people, locked up and got up under the hands of the world. And you know we don't like that. And he said, has been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, when it chop us up to captivity and to spoil. In other words, we used to filet mignon and now we eating rats. We be so hungry, we got to eat whatever they feed us. Or bats, or camels, or eagles. Eating whatever. Bears. Dead. Whatever. We went in captivity. I don't know if they ate those things, but I'm just imagining that whatever it was, it was not the same thing as eating in a five-star. And now you in a area where you hunt food that that you got to go, like you see people say, I'm just hungry, I didn't want something to eat. I mean, all yeah, the food that people threw away, like the products or eat with the pigs. The cat, how you going to, ooh, just think about eating with the pigs. And God has already told them, don't eat the pig. And now you eat with the pig. Oh, that's how hungry these people got. Now they, God gave them something to let y'all back out now. Now you still going to be under the king's uh, uh, of the world. You still going to have a regular president. That was never my will. But since you don't know how to act, you got to have, you, you want to see a king. I'm going to put you up on the king that will kill you. I tried to let y'all be king, let me talk to you, but you start killing each other. I'm just... He said, to captivity, to spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day. He said, we became a people that are the best under the people that we didn't even understand their language. They slept with dogs. They, they did stuff that we just, they just did stuff that we have been taught better, but we don't act better. So God said, go over there where you can act. You're going to act like them, you're going to live with them. And he said, and now for a little space, grace. When I hear people say, we didn't see grace until we saw Jesus. Verse eight, and now for a little space, grace. Grace has always been here. How do you think Jesus learned how to be graceful? Because his dad was. And now for a little space, grace has been showed from the Lord our God. It was grace that made the father say, I'm going to give you my son. Oh, Lord, help us to get in this word. Soften our hearts, Lord. To leave us a remnant to escape. He said, I'm, a, I'm trying to get the people back on track. I got a few of y'all. A remnant means it's a few. He said, you left a remnant, just a few of us, just so you will knock this world off the face of its axle. To leave us on a rem leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail, just a little portion of your holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our abundance. We just, he, you sent us here so we have a revival. You thought enough of us to let us come in one more time and to be in your presence. We haven't been in your presence like this in 70 years. And we came back and the group that came before me that built the temple have turned their backs on you. It was so God. And he didn't say for they are. He said for we are bondmen. Slaves. That's what that means. Yet our God has not forsaken us. He said when I had you locked up I still had my eyes on you. I believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Yet our God has not forsaken us in our bondage, but he has extended mercy, grace and mercy. Everybody to say that 
there is no favor of God in the Old Testament, you need to be born again. Or you need to tell God to forgive you of your sins of ignorance and then stubbornness. But he has extended mercy unto us in the sight of the king of Persia. Persia said, I like the way y'all act. And I'm going to give y'all the money to go down there and be a different kind of people. To give us a reviving, to set up our house, to set up the, the house of God, our God. And to repair the desolation thereof and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. God said, I'm going to send you back home. I'm going to give you the land back. Just go back and build my house. I promise I'll be there. And then get everything prepared around it. Like the king gave you all that money to come down here to do this. And then you come back in here and you turn on me that quick. Why are you wasting my time like that? You want to know why God said my time ain't wasted? Because I still got somebody going to seek me in the middle of all this foolishness. And if I have to make this whole world for, like he told Moses, I'll I drown, I do what I got to do, get rid of these folks, and start all the way back over again. I, I, you know I'll drown the world now. You know I'll put you on the water. And I saved eight. Six, three sons, two wives, and my wife, Noah. You won't stop. You won't stop hurting each other. You won't stop. When I tell you not to marry a certain person because I know that when you produce them kids, they're going to be a menace to society. Fighting over something that don't make sense called religion. I'm this and I'm this. And I go to church on Saturday and I, go to, I don't go to church. Or whatever we do. All that foolishness. Why would you make an agreement with somebody and you're not on the same page and you've got to live like that for the rest of your life? Hoping in the praying. I don't do no business like that. I'm trying to tell you to get somebody that can build your business. Marriage was not a... The Jews practiced marriage in a way where it was, it, was, it was an arrangement to build a business so they can have children to increase. Because they know that when I close my eyes, whatever I'm feeling, it probably ain't going to matter. All the stuff that we paint up everything to look like. You had to have a plan to marry somebody. And God said, you ain't got no plan. You just want to have sex. And that's what they did. And he said, every time you do that, you're going to do nothing but just going to take the society and just crumble it. Because if all you want is sex, you're going to never get tired of that. <clears throat> that's that iniquity. But when you got a plan, you ain't got time to have sex like that. But every time we get away from God, we go just like Solomon. God, Solomon had everything under the sun and walked on silver like we walking on rocks outside. And still he couldn't get enough sex. I know that man had had some kind of sexually transmitted muted disease. I know he did some kind of way. You slept with a, 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 a you got a thousand women that say you their wife. And then you got 300 extra girls and you ain't got no, no, it, it, it what you do? But all I know is the church just, God said, now when I, <laughs> one of my brother one time told me, and that's when he was, Full of what well, he said, uh, whatever he said, I'm like, if we don't have no sex in heaven, I ain't sure I want to go. God said, Heaven ain't got, he said, Heaven ain't, earth ain't got nothing on him. Just to be in my presence is. Just to, he said, Trust me, I don't lie. If you think sex is the number one. Motivation for life on earth. He said, I gave you that for comfort here to, to your wife. Eyes have not seen. Trust me. On to your lives. Ed was so sick until he was like, he said, God tried to be good to us, and we all, we just got out of jail. And he gave us a second chance, and we, we just, we, 
Now we over here worshiping a bottle of water. Worshiping a piece of gold. Worshiping a tree. And now, oh Lord our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken your commandments. You didn't ask us to do nothing but the right thing. You just, God is like that. He said, let me tell you why I want you to be a businessman. He said, you can be a businessman, you'll understand me. You understand how I operate in the world. You understand why I have to have guidelines. But if you're lazy, I'll tell you right now, there's not one lazy man in this world. I saw one. He was laying at that pool for 38 years. And Jesus said, man, get up. Take up your bed and walk. Full of excuses. And then Jesus saw that guy laid again. He said, I'll tell you something. What you did to get down there for 38 years, he said, don't you do that no more. He said, don't you enter that sin no more. God can't stand lazy people. He can't stand lazy people. He can't stand nasty houses. He can't stand... Uh, he can't stand stuff. He can't stand... I, I, went, I was looking for something this morning, and I hadn't been in this drawer that I keep because I haven't been to the gym or to the pool, so my jogging clothes, and I had bought some extra T-shirts and stuff. And I couldn't find something I was looking for, so I had to pull all that stuff out of the drawer. And the Lord said, take him the door. Just because you can't see it don't mean that it don't need to be maintained. You can't keep adding stuff to that drawer like that. You got to make sure that what you put in there is, why you got winter and summer clothes in the same drawer? I pull them clothes out and I organize them. So I know that that shouldn't be it. It's too hot to have um, hoodies. <laughs> Whatever I had in that drawer. You know, how we think because you don't see it, it don't matter, but it does. You just, God is saying, I just can't stand stuff that's out of order. Have you noticed that when I write, I read, teach in order? And I said, I want your life, Miss Brenda. Uh, Sharika, if you're still here, girl, I'm going to tell you something. If, I, if you were here, I would hire you to help me with this garden because I cannot get it together. I can't tell the weed from the seed. I don't know what I planted last year. Anyway, get back to the word. He's ever said, which you have commanded by your servant, the prophet, saying, the land unto which you go to possess it is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their unclean. God said, well, y'all go into a land where it's from, from one side of the other to the other side. It ain't, it, it's, it's filthy. You see, you're going where people do anything, anywhere, talk. Yeah, you're going to the, you going to the internet. You going to a place where people don't care what they say or do. And I want you to go in and be a light to those people because I love them. Even though they got to get off this earth, because I'm giving you that land, I need you to remove them, folks, so that so that when Brenda reads, she'll understand. If you're going to run a business, it can't be filthy. You can't. I, I mean, if you got a business and people come in your business and you want them to purchase from you, this is how God run the world. But you can't find your stuff because everything, somebody done sat on it, somebody done had sex on it, somebody been bleeding on it, somebody. Just think about it, somebody urinate on the, on the toilet seat and they, you can't. He said, that's, what, that's how they live. They got big old fancy, nice places, but it's full of semen. They kill, and when they don't like it, they do what they got to do to get rid of you. They sleep with the dogs and the sheep, chicken. He said, when you get there, I don't want you to act like them folk. But now, here we are, being trained by God. And Elsa said, well, we back. He said, now, therefore, he said, Lord, God, he said, Ed was a praying. He said, you told us that it was a filthy place and we came in and we made sense of the place because of you. Because we were doing the same thing in Egypt. Now we got better sense and we start prospering. Our babies, women, our wives were not miscarrying and our fruit and gardens didn't look like brindles out there with them weeds. She can't tell because I'm an amateur just though. 
ain't making no excuse. I, I got to, I just got to grow up for, so I can know the difference between a weed and, and, and a, what I planted. But he said, I, I brought you to this place to make a difference. He said, every time you think about why I do what I do, think about what would you do if you had a business like mine? And I'm running the whole world, and the whole world is under my, are my employee, your employees. And I'm trying to serve people to get them and come and buy from a better quality. But the people that's supposed to have better quality is pouring, pouring getting real expensive jars and pouring water, diluting the stuff that's supposed to be in there and making money off of stuff that you don't have no right to because you're lying to the people. You're talking about this is organic. And you know it's not. You sell stuff or overprice it, and then you, you know no value is there. And and Elsa was like, he said, I, I, Lord, this is what we are and what you said not to be. He said, now Elsa stopped praying. He looked at the folk and said, now therefore give not your daughters unto your to their sons. Don't y'all intermarry like that. You know good and well if if that woman is worshiping a tree. Just because you want to have sex with her, she said, unless you worship this tree, you ain't getting nothing. You know you're going to be on your knees. <laughs> ah, the word is funny to me. Now, therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace of... Don't, do your, don't, don't make money the way they make it. Don't do it. Oh, it like, loving God and understanding God, it's so simple. Just do what's right. Just tell the truth. Just say, I'm going to have more of your yard. Let the people know that what you do. Well, you know ain't nobody perfect. Just, no, don't say nobody. Just say you're not. Just tell, go in the grocery store and steal something and say, you know, ain't nobody. I, ain't, I can't help it. Yeah, well, did, did. Perfect doesn't mean, perfect means that if I tell you that's not yours, leave it alone. Absolutely ain't nothing wrong with that. And Jesus said, when I call, you can be my friend. I don't care what nobody said. You just became perfect. Why? Because I'm getting ready to tell you what to do. And you're going to obey me. I ain't saying you ain't going to have no scar on your face. I'm just saying that you got sense enough to hear what I said and go do it. He said, that's, that, that. He said Abraham was a perfect. Walk before me and be perfect. Job was a perfect and upright man. And, he, and Jesus said, you be perfect for I am. What does that mean? What did my father say? Follow his instructions. And if that means you got to go back and apologize and tell Walmart you stole this, then he said, when you tell the truth, you became just like I am. You stole it. Now go make yourself, get it back right, which is perfect. Go back and tell them that's what you did. But we don't want to do that. So you're right. I can't see. Nobody follow direction. Let's see. Elder looked at them folks and said, now therefore give not your daughters to their sons and neither take your daughters to their daughters to your sons, nor seek the way they make money that you may be strong. You have you may, that you may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. He said, Do the right thing so we can keep this land. Don't don't let don't let a temporary situation get you where you lose your mind against God's word. Have some so when your kids grow up, they can remember you. And not ashamed to call you father because call you dad because you are the dad. He said, do something in life different. Stand out. Stand out. How you stand out? Follow direction. Stop putting water in that gasoline and having people paying all that money. Talking about this octane. You know you don't flood that thing with water. And now that you got to go to the store because they car all messed up. We got sin so much until we we just if you find somebody doing it right, it's almost it's luxury. I saw a man on TV. He didn't even know he was baking the cake. He did this. And then get what he did, cut that cake up. I don't know if the camera cut off. He washed his hand. He might have. But some people ain't washing their hand. But they they got all this stuff outside. Tell me, they got to spray this right here. <laughs> we so phony. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us do right, Lord. Me too. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds, Ezra said, and our great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, has punished us, less, less than our iniquities deserve, 
and has given us such a deliverance. He said, we deserve more punishment than what God has put up on us. God said, I got a point that if you don't stop, then I'm not going to stop punishing. You want to keep sinning? Then I will continue to punish. There won't be no one more chance, one more chance. It won't be that. Because what I say to you is simple. Be honest. He said, should we again break the commandments and join in affinity or become one with the people of these abominations? Abominations mean they're doing everything under the sun, just like 2021. Anything they want to be, people do anything they want to do. And then they post it on the internet like it's legal. Like God said, it's okay. It is not okay. Would not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us so that he, so that there should be no remnant, no escape? He's like, we're going to sin so much until God just got to knock us off. All these people, these are the, in five more years, in five, 500 more years or less. Jesus is going to be born. And they are screaming since we got somebody got to stand up for what is right. If somebody don't, don't stand up for right, then God would destroy this place. That's what they were saying. If somebody don't set themselves apart, somebody, if we can't find a good school, we can't find a good preach. Because the, the priest was gone bad. The people were gone bad. The business was gone bad. The children was gone bad. And then he went back and started talking to God. Oh, Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, but we remain yet escaped. As it is this day, behold, we are before you in our trespasses. He said, us, Lord. Why? Because we're a team. Israel said, when you don't win, I don't win. We're a team. We're the earth. We're God's property. When one of us go to the left, all the whole body got. He said, "We, we, I ain't looking good toward God because I ain't doing what you're doing. When you do wrong, God looking at the whole nation saying, somebody do something. And Elder said, we are before you in our trespasses, but we cannot stand before you because of this. We can't go before you with all this crazy stuff. God said, he said, your business, you. That's the last, that's the last, that's the last word. It ends right there as him pleading to God and saying, I recognize that we are not right. And, and at the same time, he talked to the people, then he talked to God, and he talked to the people, and he talked to God. Father, today we thank you that we have learned what you had to say according to uh, Ezra chapter 9. If I didn't know the date of this time, it would look like this would be appropriate to say what we are doing today. Father, help us, Lord. Even though it is, we are, it, I feel like, you know, even when I mess up talking too much and the things that I do, it's hard to just keep coming back and say, Lord, forgive me again, forgive me again. But you said that if you mean it with all of your heart that you would hear us. And Lord, forgive us of our sins today. From the top to the bottom. Lord, raise up the people that would just read this word to these people. Let them see that your word is not outdated. And help us to be a people that represent you, that's set aside, that's doing right in business, doing right in our homes, and doing right in those things that you have given us freely. In Jesus' name we pray. That's all I got to say. Y'all can get in chapter 10. Love y'all. Bye.